Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Frankie. I'm an associate professor at Brigham Young University, and I'm also a principal investigator in the NSF-sponsored Center for Unmanned Aircraft Systems, or the CUAS. And about six years ago, when I initiated my research into civil engineering applications of unmanned aerial vehicles, or drones, as I'll call them in this presentation, one particularly honest friend of mine asked, since when was playing with toys considered serious scientific research? Now, I don't necessarily fault my friend for his opinion, and, uh, because after all, if it looks like a duck, if it sounds like a duck, if it flies like a duck, then it probably is a duck, right? Yeah, I know. I'm good. <laughs> well, I told you, Scott, I wouldn't kill anybody. <laughs> Not necessarily. A wise mentor of mine once taught me that innovation is when we learn to do something better, cheaper, or faster. But transformation is when we manage to accomplish more than one of these at the same time. With this definition, I believe that drones are transforming the world, and I'm not alone. Drones have already fundamentally changed the scientific landscape. In recent years, engineers and scientists have used drones to collect data from tall mountains from remote glaciers, from dangerous storms or tornadoes, from difficult to reach infrastructure, and even from dangerous animal habitats like polar bear caves. Drones are collecting more data than ever before, and they're doing it in less time and for less cost. Drones are transforming our profession as well. For example, in 2014, following the magnitude eight Iquique, Chile earthquake, our research group at BYU approached the Geotechnical Extreme Events Reconnaissance Association, or GEAR, and we requested permission to fly a few of our drones at two identified liquefaction sites, the port of Iquique and a large lateral spread at the bottom of a slot canyon in the middle of the Atacama Desert, of all places. Our request was approved and we soon found ourselves flying our drones over these sites. Now, we were successfully able to fly these sites in about one to two hours, and we collected hundreds of images using a camera no larger than this. And we processed these images using a technique called structure from motion computer vision to develop high-resolution three-dimensional point cloud and digital surface models of these sites. Now, these models looked beautiful. They turned out really great. But we wanted to understand how useful these models would be and how accurate they were. So we hired an undergraduate student, and we asked him to use these models to develop digital cumulative crack width measurements along a few identified lateral spread transects. Now this task required several hours for the student to complete, but when he was finished, we wanted to compare his measurements against those collected from the field by our talented colleague, Professor Kyle Rollins. When we saw the results, we were completely blown away. We knew immediately that drones would forever change post-disaster reconnaissance. And so did gear, so much so that drones have been incorporated into nearly every gear reconnaissance since 2014. Drones have played major roles in reconnaissance missions to Japan, Italy, New Zealand, Mexico, India, Nepal, Greece, Taiwan, and even snowy Anchorage. Teams have used drones to collect 
images from potentially dangerous or difficult to reach sites. And today, research teams are using drones to image nearly every site considered significant or important. So if this is what drones offer us today, what are they going to bring to the table tomorrow? Well, let's imagine a major earthquake striking a populated city in the United States, maybe Los Angeles, in the not so distant future. Within minutes of the event, large sentinel drones rise over the city, position themselves, and begin scanning for damage. These drones communicate in real time with satellites in space and perform real time damage location and change detection, such that within 15 minutes of the earthquake, the location of every damaged or collapsed structure throughout the entire city is identified and mapped. Within minutes of the event, on-site swarms of drones rise and begin inspecting critical infrastructure, including bridges, dams, and power facilities. Hundreds of tiny drones swarm these facilities and image and inspect every square inch in a matter of minutes. All images are immediately uploaded and sent to the Sentinel network for additional analysis and anomaly detection. If the system identifies potential anomalies, they're forwarded to inspectors and engineers for confirmation. The Sentinel network also deploys life safety drones. These tiny drones are sent out to all the various piles of rubble throughout the city. And they carry sensitive acoustic sensors and are designed to detect even the faintest sounds and signs of life from beneath the rubble. If such sounds are detected, they immediately notify the Sentinel network and that message is forwarded on to emergency responders. The Sentinel network also deploys a series of ground motion recording drones, or seismo drones. These drones carry sensitive accelerometers and accurate positioning sensors, and they scatter in hundreds throughout the city and attach themselves to buildings and to the ground, and they begin listening and recording. All ground motion data that is recorded is sent in real time to the Sentinel network and made available to researchers throughout the world. Now, GEAR, within seven days of the event, deploys a reconnaissance team to the city to investigate and learn from the earthquake. Prior to even arriving in the city, the GEAR team has investigated time-lapsed 3D models of the city to see how conditions have changed prior or following each aftershock. They've also investigated real-time damage and incident location maps and analyzed hundreds of ground motion records. All of these to find and identify sites for additional investigation. At these sites of additional investigation, they deploy geophysical testing drones built upon the pioneering technology of our colleague Demetrius Zekos. These geo drones collect preliminary surface wave data. Every member of the GEAR team carries their own personalized miniature drone that uses a camera and a micro LIDAR scanner. These drones are no larger or heavier than a bottle of water. Within one week of the earthquake, ground motion, building motion, liquefaction location, building damage location, landslide location, and utility location maps are made, modeled, and made available to decision makers and researchers throughout the world. Unfortunately, the team is still a month late in delivering its final technical report, but I guess some things will never change. Now, if what I've described to you sounds like science fiction, I assure you it's not. It's much closer to reality than you may realize. So what do we need to do to push this into our reality? Well, first, we need to continue improving remote sensors, make them more efficient, more affordable, and improve their resolution, and smaller and miniaturized. 
Second, we need to improve the flight endurance of our drones. This will be accomplished through major advances in battery technology, in motor efficiency, in renewable energy, and bio-inspired aircraft design. Third, we need to solve the last 100 feet of flight problem. This problem recognizes that most challenges encountered during automated drone flight occur in the final 100 feet of the mission, where the drone tends to encounter cluttered terrain and come in close contact with humans and infrastructure. Advances in AI, onboard processing, machine learning, machine vision, and GPS denied navigation are all going to present and contribute to the solution of this problem. Fourth, we need better, more efficient regulations in the United States, and we need to reduce the red tape that currently exists. I've spoken with dozens of business owners who tell me that the current regulatory environment for drones in the United States is stifling, stifling the massive economic and scientific potential of drones. But with improved regulation and reduced red tape, we also need improved safety. Now, I don't fault regulators for the current red tape environment. Drones make them nervous, and they rightfully should. In the wrong hands, a single drone can become an incredibly effective weapon of terror. We've seen what a single drone can do to an airport, costing hundreds of millions of dollars in direct losses. We desperately need research and advancements in the area of counter UAS to protect us from these threats, but in a way that doesn't withhold or hold back the responsible application of commercial drones. Now, I hope that what I've been able to share with you today has expanded your vision of what's possible with drones in our profession. Drones are much, much more than toys. They are a transformational and a transformative technology. And our profession, and in ASCE, we would do well to embrace this technology, to push it forward, advance it, and use it. Thank you.